Well, how you doing, son? I'm watching uh, American Idol here. Hey, I got it on too, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that that uh, Randy Jackson always says, "Yo, dog, no canine present." <laughs> Even I know this dead. They don't have to be there to talk about them. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, that Simon Cow quite a pistol. A little on the nasty side. Yeah, it makes me feel like James Carville on the TV there. <laughs> that doesn't stop. You jibber-jabbering in an accent of some sort. Yeah. Who here don't know what the connection is? That one of my favorite moments ever on the show. You can almost hear Frank falling out right out of the box when he realizes that he and Carvey are walking the tightrope together. Uh, God, that was funny. Uh, joining us now, the uh, Bush, uh, what would it be, the, the Bush Younger. What is the father called? The Perfil? P-E-R-E-F-I-L-S? And uh, the Younger Bush, Frank Caliendo with us. Hey, Frankie, how you doing? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm great, man. So funny to hear that. That was, uh, that was one. I, I, more people talk to me about that than uh, just about anything I've done in, in recent years. <laughs> one of the things, they're like, what was it like to be, you know, because my friends and I, 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 and I don't, this is a compliment, you know, I was in high school and college watching you and Dana and stuff like that. To be doing a bit with Dana Carvey is one of the most surreal things ever for me. Yeah, well, that's, uh, illicit, uh, that's Lacey and include me just because you're a polite man, but as a guy who ended up doing what you're you're doing, you were doing it with the one guy I, I think you probably wanted to be doing it with on the planet. He's, uh, God, it was, and you, you know, you know he thinks you knocked that out of the park. I don't know if you guys have talked since, but I called him later that day to compliment him. He said, my God, that was, he, the kid's unbelievable. So good. Well, I, I, I emailed him about 10 or 15 times. I haven't heard back yet. <laughs> no, he, I actually emailed him when I was doing a thing in Vegas, when I was doing the show in Vegas for a while, I said, hey, if you ever come through, if you want to stop by, and he was very nice and said, yeah, absolutely, it, it never worked out that way, but, you know, then I, then to think that I got, had email, uh, you know, Dana Carvey's email address, and I'm e- emailing Dana Carvey. Yeah. That, that he thought you were the quintessential pro, man, so I no doubt you guys will touch base. Frankie, why out of Vegas, man? That's such an ideal thing for you. Do it just time to move on? Were you getting a little, do you feel a little claustrophobic? Yeah, you know, I'm actually, I'm going back for a couple of weeks. I'm going to go to the Venetian in March. I see uh, that March 22nd through April 1st, if you're so predisposed, folks, and for more info, Go to Frank Caliendo, C A L I E N D O dot com. But the Venetian, March 22nd through April 1st. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, it, it was a good reason to interrupt. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> when you were there all the time, was it I just mean, catching up to you? Were you getting island fever? Yeah, I was. You know, I have two little kids. I have a seven year old and a five year old, and we live in Phoenix. And I was commuting back and forth, um, and my kids were, you know, just getting tired of me being gone. And, uh, it, it, it just got to be a bit rough. And it's, I, you know, the, 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 the average person out there doesn't know what it's like to go to work five days a week and look at the same. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and I find myself, I find myself realizing how much of a complainer I am. I, a couple guys who were, uh, visiting from, come, came back from, uh, Iraq and, uh, had come back. And we're talking to me backstage because anytime so some military guys, I mm-hmm. love to talk to them because they, you know, just feel like I can support sure. them however I can. Kiss and, the ring, my it, friend. Kiss the ring. Yeah, they're and great, always great guys, right? Yeah. Men, men and women, and so they come backstage, and I'm complaining about how I have to do this every night, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just mm-hmm. traveling so much, and they're listening to me, and I go, guys, you, you could tell me I'm a jerk because you're in a rack. <laughs> <laughs> it was 138 degrees. They were carrying a seven-pound pack, getting shot at by morons. And I'm complaining about the plane trip oh. from Phoenix. But they listened, and I was like, "See, that's why you guys are who you are, and I am who I am. I, yeah. I am sorry, but I'm glad you guys are who you are." Yeah, I often think they see us in some sort of borderline predator mode, where they can sense our softness is through some heat photography. Or something that they have in their retinas where you guys like you and I come in and we're a shade of pink or something. You know, and they, they That see. might have been those beeps that I heard. Like, <laughs> oh, boy. We're talking to Frank Caliendo. And in addition to that little stint at the Venetian we already talked about, and by the way, more information on all these dates at frankcaliendo.com, I could isolate a couple. January 28th at the Spotlight 29 Casino in Coachella, California, not to be confused with the uh, January 29th 
Spotlight 28th. <laughs> January 28th, it's you a Spotlight 28th. That. That, that was a moment for me to enjoy where you actually got a little... Yeah, I got a little tied up there. I got a little pretzel. I've been there, done that. I've had that issue. January 17th through 19th at Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Doug the Trump. Watch it a couple weeks ago or last week. You broke out a nice Trump. Um, and then Donald somebody, jumped somebody into it. that I look like Carol Channing. <laughs> what I found well, would be very funny. Her hair was a little more padded. Though. But uh, then Trump jumps in and takes it over. So he obviously has no problem with the impression. Who's new? Who do you got lately? I mean, obviously I'll get to some Madden. But I had heard I heard rumble of uh, Morgan Freeman. Are we, do you have a Morgan yeah, well, Freeman? Yeah, well, one of the things I always had fun doing was, you know, doing a joke that people didn't get on purpose purpose so I could explain it with John Madden. <laughs> yeah. So now with him, the only thing Madden seems to be doing is the end of the Prilotech OTC commercial, right? where Larry the Cable Guy comes in and goes, that's like flipping your burgers out there, they're burnt. <laughs> and then it cuts this, obviously, they just threw a green screen or something right. behind John Madden and said, uh, you know, hey, available at Walmart. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> And it's not. It has no. It's there's no. It's fluidity to the commercial or anything like that. It's just like, hey, say this, say this, and say this, and we'll just cut it in somewhere. Right. It's like uh, he uh, Larry's the Zoftic drug mule up front who carts the thing <laughs> through security and then hands it off to Madden for the money shot. I got dressed up for this. That's very good. <laughs> Give him... I, I'm doing a commercial with who? <laughs> no. I've been doing it with Callian. At oh, that I point, that thing he did with Dana Carr. <laughs> really good. You're just on the phone with Madden at that point. That is surreal. Inhabitation. What, 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 let me. Uh, oh. So the Morgan Freeman. When I've started to do it, you know, with some of the jokes and something, then starting to add it more and more. Is at a certain point, I'll just be, and that's when the audience realized that Frank Caliendo had finally gone. Down. <laughs> <laughs> the audience wasn't sure if this was part of the show or not. Oh. They were just waiting for Frank to figure out what he was going to do next. <laughs> Frank, these are eerie. Honest to God, man. I, I, do you have the same joy when you finally vapor lock on it that we get when we think that's just perfect? Yeah, I, I mean it's it's a lot of fun when they when they when they finally get there to a point where you're going ah oh, I get who that is and you don't even have to explain it yes that's yes the, that's the thing and yeah, for me it's bumps. weird because the sports guys are I, I guess it's because I'm known in that sports niche but like the Barkley who would have thought five years ago that you'd be watching a Weight Watchers commercial and Charles Barkley would be the spokesperson. <laughs> Well, Not me. Well, give me a time machine to go back and bet on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like... a really crazy situation <laughs> out there. They call me the cake bus, the pie train, fatter, fatter, boom, ladder. We actually did the sketch, and we we didn't have enough time because we were in between games. But we actually did a, a, a cut to. Barkley with uh, me as Barkley with a tear coming down, a slow teardrop, <laughs> like the Indian at the end of the yeah. commercial. The, sometimes it hurts. <laughs> oh, Frank. Well, listen. When when you just do the voices, it's good enough. But I'm telling you, the witty tinsel you hang on the tree of the impression is always great. I'm te- it's state of the art over there. Well, that was the thing that I learned from Carvey too, was, as opposed to some of the vaudevillian impressions. It was from Dana Carvey that he he, he had a take. He didn't always go right, for, right. What's the impression? He went for what's the character behind the impression? Yeah. Imagine him winnowing it down to wouldn't be prudent. I don't think Bush ever said that. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, not got the. What be prudent? I mean, that that's absolute genius that Carvey found that Morse code. We're talking to Frank Caliendo, February 24th through the 26th at the Irvine Improv. Great club, folks. Absolutely great club. March 2nd, Thunder Valley Casino in Sacramento. March 16th through 18th at the Pittsburgh Improv. Frankie, I understand you went home to Wisconsin last week. They say you can never go home again. Did you have a better fate than that? Uh, yeah, I had a great I had a great time. It was supposed to be my birthday was on Thursday. Friday was uh, Green Bay. Saturday was Milwaukee, and then Sunday was supposed to be the NFC Championship. Right. It was still the NFC Championship. It was just in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, so. that's a tricky one. But if anybody could perk their joys up, it was you. And it was good to see the Cheeseheads. Yeah, it was great. I mean, people if people needed a little laugh because it's not like the rest of the country, especially in Green Bay. When your your team loses and you expect them to win, it's kind of like, uh, the, in Green Bay, it's like, what are we going to do? Right, right. That's what when they all happened? meet in the town square and hit the Phil Bengston pinata. That's what, <laughs> the only way they could heal up. All right, the great Frank Caliendo. Frank, always good to join you, and I'm glad you're back with your kitties, man. That sounds great. 
Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Later, Gator.